Hey, welcome everybody. This is TJ of ShopBot Tools. Today's training, we're going to talk about the tool database and calculating different bits that go in this database. This is your library of bits. This is your reference. This is where you go. So the you need to figure out a way to set this up that is most convenient for you. I want to be able to go in, grab a bit, put it to my project, uh, do my preview and get out to the machine and get this thing cut. In. So we'll look at some different avenues for setting this up that might work best for you. Uh, as far as organization, adding bits, and setting up even bits that don't exist in here. When you first buy your ShopBot, you do have a ShopBot starter set and a ShopBot desktop starter set that are in there. But you're going to venture out and start using different bits. Here's the different widget works accessories like the diamond drag and the vinyl uh, knife. And when those get put in here, where does this information come from? Uh, luckily, with the widget works, they put a very nice uh, cheat sheet that comes with it that talks about how to program this. But then there's going to be times where you're going to venture out and maybe someday down the road you're going to do a lot of plywood cutting where you get into a compression bit. And you go in here and you can just hit new and add this bit. But where does all of this stuff get generated from? The pass depth, feed rate, spindle speed, stuff like that. So we'll also look into calculating chip load. So we're using the right bit with the right uh, cutting parameters and that way we're maximizing the life of our bit and we're getting the edge quality that we desire with our CNC. So that's what we're going to look at here today. The tool database and cutting with these different bits and bringing them into our tool database so we have them in the library for later use. Well before you even dig too far into the tool database you do need to know a little bit about the material you're working with so you can choose the right bit. So here's one of the handouts that will be provided just going over a few basic type of bits. Since an end mill is probably one of the most common used ones that's the one I'm going to talk about and there's different types of ones and there are a couple different flavors that come in your ShopBot uh, router bit kits and just to be looking here at these uh, the first one here is straight flu. It's your general all purpose all around just great bit and you see these cutter edges on them. Those are actually called the flutes is what those are. Those are the, depending on what type of bit you're using, if it's a carbide tipped, but that flute is the actual cutting edge. <clears throat> uh, you have, as as technology keeps uh, increasing with all the different great things we can do with, uh, with CNC, uh, they've created these bits that have an up spiral, a down spiral, and I'll lastly finish up talking about a compression. Uh, but what it is is geometry designed into the flute that spirals in, in a way that it brings the chip up out of the cut. So that's an up spiral. <clears throat> and again here being a down spiral, the chip is actually pushed down. The chip I'm talking about is the sawdust or the scrap material being removed depending on the material you're using. <clears throat> Up spiral, again, great bit. Talk about some pros and cons of it. Upward force may cause lifting. Works really good for plastics and aluminum where heat buildup is a concern. A spiral uh, down cut is a great bit as well. However, downward force um, could actually compact the chips down into the groove. So you wouldn't want to be using this bit for drilling, for, for instance. Um, and then the compression bit, which is the bit we're going to have to add to our tool database next. This is a good uh, bit for people that do a lot with plywoods. And it has a up spiral and a down spiral built into this geometry, which keeps the uh, thin veneers that we see on the edge of our plywood from ripping apart. It actually holds the sawdust into the kerf. You won't expose your vacuum as, as quickly. And a compression is a great bit for that. Again, not an ideal one for drilling. And again, you can download this. Uh, here and, and read up more onto these bits. So a compression bit is something say we now bought and we need to add to our tool database because we're going to be doing a bunch of plywood with it. So we'll move there with our next step adding a compression bit to our tool database. Alright to add this compression bit we at least need to go find out where to get one. So we stock and sell Onsroot bits. When we only have a few ones we don't carry in stock you can go to their website and find a, a local um, dealer or you can order through their website which is uh, www.onsroot.com and um, I'm going to scroll down here I need to find the full where the spiral compression bits are and I see I'm on page 41 so I will go down there and I've already got a quarter inch one and I've got a three eighths one but I'd like to step it up and have a big half inch one I'm doing some really thick inch 
uh, thick plywood so looking to do this bigger bit so I'm gonna go in here and and look and the ones that I've been using are the double flute so it has two sets of cutters and looking down here there's different options as far as you've got flute length which is the length of the cutters the diameter of the bit I'm sorry the diameter of the cutting part uh, the overall upcut flute length the overall length and then also the shank diameter because your shank diameter could be different than say the cutting diameter um, so right down here I'm looking and I see a couple different half inch ones but I noticed this little asterisk here where it says uh, mortise compression and what a mortise compression is and it's really nice is it, the uh, bottom part here which is your up spiral it, they make it a smaller distance so when you're doing multiple passes it's it's a, it's a shorter uh, vertical on the Z length of that up spiral so you you don't have to do as deep say as a uh, plunge to worry about getting past the up spiral down into the down spiral section of the compression and we could do a whole training on just the the compression bit itself but for now let's just grab the um, info here for our on through bit which is the 60173 and I would write these numbers down and then bring it over to my vcarve pro or my aspire so here we are in just our one of our files we can go here and open the tool database and again it's all on how you want to organize this but for mine i've got a set of my bits that i know i've made especially on a community computer where other people are using it you you want to label things and and reference things as much as you can in here so other people won't get confused so for me right now I'm gonna say hey I need to add a new new bit and since yes it is an end mill I'm gonna put that in there and again I just gotta start typing in the dimensions now and the parameters that I want to have so it's a half inch again when I put this in it changes up here but I'm gonna go even ahead and say this isn't just a end mill I'm gonna say that this is a one half one half inch compression and it's always nice to have reference in here maybe you break the bit or somebody wants to know where that came from you know I could say that is Onsrud's number 60-173 and I even wanted to put on here hey there's the little note showing that it is a uh, mortise and compression and again down here is where you start typing in your parameters and that's where we'll move into next is where does these parameters just magically come for these new bits we gotta figure out a chip load uh, not everybody's gonna know right off the top of the head what pass depths spindle speeds are gonna work for this so that's where we would come in here with the chip load calculator which we'll do next and set this up and then come up with the correct feed and speed feed rate pass depth and then we could hit apply and save that into our tool database All right, we're inside the shopbot control software and inside here is a tools underneath the tools is the chip load calculator and this is a good way to estimate the size of the chip load that's correct for the bit that you've just added to your tool database so I go in here and it pops up with a um, little fill-in sheet of what we're trying to figure out in this case depending on what information we know is what case we would go along uh, you can go in here to chip load help and read all about what chip load is you have the chip load equals it's the feed rate which is uh, what so far we've been doing it inches per second and that's divided by your RPM times the number of flutes so number of cutting sizes sides on the bit the revolutions per minute of the spindle and then the feed rate uh, which we have um, default on our setup as inches per second and again to really dial this in this is a very rough chip load that we have to dial this in you can go back to that Onsrud catalog I had open earlier and in the very back of that would be all of the chip loads really really dialed into each one but you know we're just talking about plywood here and there's a set the half inch diameters the bit we were just looking at and it's saying that you need to have a chip load between 0 0.005 and 0 0.030 up to 30,000 so it, what that is actually measuring is the physical size of the chip if you were to grab the sawdust or the, the pile of chips uh, out of the curve of the cut or out of the dust collector that's talking about the size that is in your hand and that's what you're trying to dial in with this 
uh, chip load calculator. So you got to remember, we're not sanding, we're, we're actually cutting. So if you've got sawdust coming off the machine that's as thin as fine as something off a spindle sander, uh, you're actually sanding the wood and you're gonna, what you're going to do is uh, wear down the life of that bit a lot faster than it should be. But we looked at a chip load that we needed to try to get to and then this is where uh, you need to know your machine and what you're capable of. You know, is spindle speed on a uh, on a two horse HSD spindle is going to give you a different RPM than what you could on a little three horse uh, a port cable router. So you try to go with the ideal settings of what the bit manufacturer recommends and then dial it in specific to your machine. You you know, if we had here 12 inches a second for cutting and it gave the proper chip load, is the machine that you have physically capable of cutting 12 inches a second and holding the material there allowing you to get that accurate of a cut. So that's the kind of stuff that you need to put into consideration while you're cu calculating this chip load. So me just put in a couple rough numbers right there. I see them at 0 .008 and ours had to be between 0.005 and 0.030 so I'm on the on the very very left side of the range where I should be and this is where you can try messing with your RPM I'm gonna lower that a little bit and see I actually lowering my RPM got me at 0.01 closer to the middle of the range that was on my chip load help I'm now at the 0.01 in between here underneath the plywood so I'm now in the middle of that range so that's what those numbers are again use this to read up more into it to really get into depth and obviously reference onsru.com to have some they have a, a website with a lot uh, more detailed chip load but this is enough to get us up and going with some parameters that we could go back into and add to our our tool database in our Vectric software and and save them for future cutting all right, as you start using and expanding different bits, you're going to find that some of the bits you use grow out of the typical being just new and having a ball nose end mill V. There's something called a form tool where you can create your own bit. You get into doing different types of trims and molding where you need different edges. What you can do with the form tool is you can come in here and draw the profile of your bit or download the profile of your bit, whatever, whichever way you're getting it. And what you're looking for, if this was the 3 8 diameter uh, shaft of the router bit we're looking at and here's the point the tip of the cutter um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut away the shaft and we're going to cut away the left side uh, snip that in half by going into node editing cut that away or snip it away with your scissors because the only thing that you need at this point would be the right hand side geometry which you can see is this right here that's all I need and I need to make sure it is highlighted before I go in here to t tool database and what I would do at this point again is I'd find where I want to add that I would add new and with that being highlighted already and I select form tool it takes it mirrors it over it came up with a one inch diameter because that's the way that bit is drawn this would be half of it half inch right here if that's half the diameter is the radius of that so you only need that half size you bring it in two size and it brings in and duplicates the geometry for you again you'd fill these uh, feeds and speeds in to correspond with what material you're cutting but at this point now I'm able to bring in a bit and get a 3d preview of exactly what that bit would do which I normally wouldn't have been able to see that without having that type of a form tool in there there's also a more in-depth training on the Vectric website for uh, creating your own custom form tool. Alright, one other thing that's real useful about this tool database is like a lot a lot of us will use multiple computers. Got a, compu a main computer in the office, have a computer out running the shop bot, and a laptop for traveling around. And one thing is really a pain in the butt is having three different sets of tool databases where you're creating files on one or you need to modify and everything's different so the easiest way to do this and again down here you can import or export other people's tool databases but um, as you do these for sometimes it only grabs 
individual areas, what I like to do is bring the entire tool database and have that the same on all of my computers. Uh, same thing with when we set up like the training area here where I'll have 12 computers and if I'm not necessarily going to ghost the entire computer, I just need to put a, a tool, an updated tool database, uh, I'll do it this way. So instead of just going and exporting one section at a time, we get our tool database all set the way we want it. So what I would do is go File and come up here to your uh, Application Data folder and that brings up our VCarve Pro 7.5 is the version here and underneath Tool Database you have this tools.tools bottom slash db and what I can do at this point is I can right click this and I can go copy and put it on a jump drive or, or I could even say hey I'm going to put this on my Aspire so my Aspire that I'm using also for drawing, I can have the same tool database as my VCard Pro, or again, say we're putting on multiple computers, I would then go and put the other computer, or I would grab the other part that I want, here's my Aspire, and say, okay, tool database, and then here, just delete the one that's in there, and then edit and paste the one that you have. And that will then allow you to close all versions of the Vectric software, reopen the Aspire, or on your other computer and then that's where you could come in here and look and see that your tool pass and your tool database is now the exact same one that you had over on your other computer or in this point my other Vectric software so that's the easy way up there is underneath file user data folder and the same with that being said too I like to do that same thing with the post processors in there too to be a little bit off topic but same thing in here if you want to bring stuff over from one to the other this is the best ways to do it is go up there under file and open the user data folder